The sound that you're now hearing is the first sound that you ever heard. It is the sound of the mother's blood pulsing through her arteries. The mother's blood is the thread that links us back through all the mothers to the very first mother of all the people to be born on this earth. We are all children of one blood. The same blood pulses through all our veins. Part of the greatest magic, part of the greatest mystery, is that all the eggs a woman will ever have form in her ovaries when she is a four-month-old fetus growing in the womb of her mother. This means that the sacred egg that you were formed in your mother's ovary when she was growing in the womb of her mother, your grandmother. You spent five months pulsing to the beat of your grandmother's blood, and your mother pulse to the beat of her grandmother's blood, and her grandmother pulse to the beat of her grandmother's blood, and back and back through the beat of the blood that we all share through all the mothers and all the grandmothers. This sound leads us back to the very first mother, the great ancestress who exists in the far reaches of the past, beyond time, place, and identity. She formed us from her blood, nourished us on her milk, loving us into existence. Here, in the womb of creation, our minds and bodies take form to the pulse of the mother's blood. Energy, life, and nourishment surround us. Return to the beginning, to the pre-conscious state, to the inner structure of the unconditioned mind, to the field of awareness out of which everything manifests and into which everything returns. This is the power and source of who and what we actually are. The pulse of the drum is the echo of the pulse of the mother's blood. For thousands and thousands of years, the drum has been used in initiatory death and rebirth rituals in which the sound of the drum draws us back to the first sound of the mother's blood and we find that our ordinary habitual minds are cleansed purified, and we return, reborn into our normal lives with clarified understanding of who we are. I believe that this is the reason, the deepest reason, that human beings drum.
What we're going to see now are frame drums from the 5th century BC. And what I want you to um, really notice on these drums are the symbols painted on the drum heads. For thousands of years, these symbols were painted on frame drums. The dot in the center is the bindu. It's the compacted, unmanifested energy of the universe. It is the first sound. It is the seed of all creation. One strike on the drum and the whole universe vibrates into existence. Also, notice the lotuses painted on the frame drum. The lotus is the ancient symbol of the womb of the goddess, the place that you first heard the pulse of the mother's blood, the very first sound. Also, notice the laurel wreath painted on the frame drum. The laurel wreath is a symbol of the power to prophesize. Many of the ancient priestesses who played the frame drum functioned as oracles. The sound of the drum drove their brain waves into an oracular state in which they could see the past and the future in the present moment. Now, this next image is also from a Greek vase painting from the 5th century BC. What we're looking at here is a metaphor for how consciousness functions. We have the tree of life which represents the human spine. And this tree of life is very clearly representing the vertebrae. And as we look at this image, on the right we see the god Apollo, the god of light and reason. And on the left is the god Dionysius, the god of the irrational, the creative. And behind Dionysius is a goddess playing a frame drum with a laurel wreath painted on it. At the base of the Tree of Life is the omphalos, the stone, the mound, the beehive at the center of the world that contains the buzzing sound of the universe, the buzzing sound of the unmanifest universe. Now, Apollo represents the left brain. He is the god of logic, of rationality. He is linear, verbal. Dionysius is the right brain. He is the creative, intuitive, holistic visionary. Yet these gods' hands are clasped together. It represents the connection between the right and left hemispheres of the brain. Now, scientists are measuring the rhythms of our thoughts with an EEG machine, and they've labeled the vibratory rates of these thoughts. The fastest are called beta. This is our ordinary, everyday type of attention. If we close our eyes and relax and go into a more meditative state, our brain waves slow down and enter into the alpha state. Slower still is the theta state. Most of us only experience the theta state when we're falling asleep and we have that strange hypnagogic dream imagery. Right below theta is delta, the slowest of our brain waves and this is sleep. Now scientists are finding that paranormal abilities manifest in a low alpha or theta state. The big problem about entering into this state, particularly the theta state, is unless you've practiced a formless type of meditation like Zen for at least 15 to 20 years, you cannot stay awake in theta. That's why you might have found yourself falling asleep on your meditation cushion. You slipped too quickly through theta into delta. But under the influence of an auditory driving mechanism, you can stay awake in theta. And that auditory driving mechanism 
is a rhythmic sound, the sound of the drum. Now there's another aspect to this. Both the right and left hemispheres of the brain have different brain waves emanating from them. Most of the time, these brain waves are not synchronized. And another aspect of this is that generally, one hemisphere is dominant for anywhere from 30 minutes to 3 hours, and then it shifts over to the other hemisphere of the brain. But under certain circumstances, deep meditation, or under the influence of rhythmic sound, both hemispheres of the brain can start resonating to the same rhythm. And this is where people experience paranormal capacities. They are able to sense the thoughts of other people, or they are able to see into the future or the past. Or they have a mystical, sudden understanding of something that they have been working on for a long time. This is called an awakened brain state. And I believe this is also why human beings have drummed for thousands and thousands of years. It was a technology for driving the brain waves of both hemispheres into a single resonating rhythm. Another aspect of this particular depiction on this vase is that it represents the oldest roots of religious thought, and that lies in shamanism. In shamanism, the tree of life is the means through which the shaman can go down into the underworld through the roots of the tree, or up through the upper branches into the heavenly realms. And the shaman is able to do this journey through the power of her drum. Often, there is the bird in the upper branches that flies off, and often there is a serpent that lives at the base of the tree that can go into the underworld. And often there is a goddess who lives in the tree. Now we see an extension of this thought that has been preserved in Hinduism, particularly in the concepts of the chakras, which are the six centers of energy and consciousness within the mind-body. The seventh center is right at the crown of the head. The first chakra is connected to the elemental energy of earth. The second, water. The third, fire. The fourth, air. The fifth, space. The sixth, into the purest realms of light. Traditionally, yogis have raised the energy from the base of the spine and described that energy as the kundalini, the serpent goddess that rises from the base of the spine up through all the chakras, up to the crown, where it unites with the sacred divine energy behind all of creation. And one of the primary technologies for doing this is chanting rhythmically and often to the sound of a drum.
just saw was Tommy Brenches and I playing a composition that we've been working on for the last three years on a type of frame drumming that we call the sitting position. It's a synthesis of traditional technique from all over the world. And that's what we're going to be teaching you today in this particular style. But we'll also show you a number of different styles from around the world. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that we're sitting right. You want your feet flat on the ground, the upper legs parallel to the ground. I'm going to talk as if everyone is right-handed and you left-handed people are going to just have to reverse everything. Your drum is going to be on your left knee. You're going to put your hand right on the top and to start put the fingers flat down on the head with the knuckles right along the edge and then you're going to turn the hand so that the fourth finger strikes right on the rim. Now make sure that all the other fingers are moving fluidly with that fourth finger. Often in the beginning people stiffen up either this finger or both fingers and that makes it much harder to get a good sound. You always want to keep your hands soft and relaxed. So all the fingers are moving but only the fourth finger is striking the rim of the drum. And this is called tak, the stroke. The first stroke that we're going to do with the right hand is ka. This stroke um, is sometimes referred to as a slap, but I think of it more as a containing stroke. It stops the vibration on the drum head. If you do an open sound right before, it stops all the vibration. So let's go ka, tak, ka, tak, ka, tak, ka, tak. Another thing to remember is that the fingers have to stick on the drum head. You don't want to bounce off. You want to stop the vibration. Also, it's just the fingertips. It's not the whole hand. You're not going flat on the drum head. This stroke, ka, is connected to the elemental energy of the earth. It's the nourishing, sustaining energy of the earth. And traditionally, it's connected to the first chakra at the base of the spine. Now the next stroke is doom and we'll start by positioning our hand on the drum head slightly cupped and the thumb is completely in contact with the drum head and then we're going to turn the hand into the drum and bounce the thumb off. Now I find that if you keep the hand cupped that the hand can stay close to the drum head and that's what's important. If you let the hand go loose, it tends to get further away from the drum head. So you want to keep that hand slightly cupped and near the drum head. Now the best place to get this sound is right along here. You don't want to go too far in here or too close to the edge. So let's go doom, tuck. Doom, tuck, doom, tuck, doom, tuck, doom, tuck, doom, tuck, doom, tuck, doom, tuck. Doom is traditionally connected to the element of water. It's the cleansing, purifying energy of water. And it resonates at the second chakra in the lower abdomen. The next stroke is tuck. It's the same as we did on the top of the drum with the left hand. We do it on the rim with the right finger. Now I'm going to be talking um, as if the thumb is one, index finger is two, middle finger is three, fourth finger, ring finger is four. So, so let's go talk. Is, um, connected to the energy of fire. It's the sound of radiant heat and light and it resonates at the third chakra at the solar plexus. Now the next stroke on this drum is a brushing sound. 
Um, if the drum head is a little rough like this one is, I just use my fingertips. If it's a smoother head, you can use your fingernails. It's a little bit louder sound. Now the important thing is that you do the down and up uh, motions evenly so that the sound is equal. And we'll play that by going down, up, down, talk, down, up, down, talk. And this brushing sound is connected to the elemental energy of air. It's the breath that we all share, and it resonates at the fourth chakra at the heart center. The strokes I think of as the alphabet, and now we're going to start combining them so that we would have words. The first one is doom, talk, talk. The way that I want you to practice this is by doing two of those slow and four of those at double that time. So I'm going to sing that first so that you know what that is. Doom, talk, talk, 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 doom, talk, talk. is just the reverse. Talk, doom, talk, talk, doom, talk, talk, doom, talk, talk, doom, talk. And we're going to do that um, slow and then four times, twice as fast. Talk, doom, talk, 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 talk, doom, talk. If you can't play the double time that fast yet, you can keep practicing it slower and just gradually get faster and faster. I'm presenting the material in a way that you'll be able to work with this video over and over again so that you, as you develop your speed and your technique, you'll be able to do the exercises. Now the next combination is doom, ka, tak, doom, ka, tak. combination is doom talk ka doom talk ka doom talk ka okay we're going to get ready to go to double time
four strokes together. We were linking three there. So the first one of the four strokes will be ka do tak tak ka do tak tak ka do tak tak and we're going to do the same thing we're going to play it slow twice and then uh, double that time four times and let's sing that Ka doom tak tak 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 ka Okay, the next combination goes just the reverse. Tak, do, ka, tak, 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 tak, do, ka, tak. Let's get ready to go. Good. Okay. The next one is doom ka tak tak 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 be talk patterns are very important to practice. Um, ideally, you should master each section before you go on to the next section of the video. But I know you're going to watch the whole video straight through and try to do the whole thing the first time you watch it. But don't get discouraged because each section builds on the previous section. So the combinations are really important to get fluidity in your strokes. Now these are eight combinations that I came up with for myself, but you can come up with any combination of strokes and you can link even more together. I just want to talk to you about the tocks. Um, you may find that you're going to have to strengthen the left hand tock. 
And I also want to talk to you about getting the right sound with this fourth finger. I'm not hitting on the outside of the rim. I'm sort of coming in at a 45 degree angle, getting a little bit of the skin and then getting the wood. So what I'd like for you to do is practice the talks um, slow and then twice as fast, like da, ka, da, ka. You can um, gradually increase the tempo of that. And another good way to strengthen the left hand is by taking a stick fundamental exercise called a paradiddle and going right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, paradiddle, 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 paradiddle. Now double what you can do is take um, the book Stick Control and do all those exercises and really develop your talks. Now I'm going to show you some 8-beat rhythms. All the stuff that we've been working on, the strokes and the combination of the strokes, are so that you can link those together to make longer rhythms and that's what we're going to be doing here. The first rhythm is doom tak tak ka tak tak ka tak 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 rhythm is doom ka tak 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 ka tak tak doom ka tak 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 ka tak tak doom ka tak 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 ka tak tak doom ka tak 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 ka tak rhythm is
next um, rhythm that I'm going to show you um, uses the brushing stroke. It goes doom ka tak brush 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 tak ka doom ka tak brush 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 tak ka doom ka tak brush 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 tak ka doom ka tak brush 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 tak ka. rhythm I did the brushing um, and then I threw in a double time of that so that's um, adds a lot of interest to the rhythm this next rhythm also uses the brushing stroke in fact it starts the rhythm down up down top Now what we're going to do is take some of those um, eight-beat rhythms that we learned earlier and interlock them so you can see what that sounds like. Tommy will be playing pattern one. Doom, tuck, tuck, ka, tuck, tuck, ka, tuck, doom, tuck, tuck, ka, tuck, tuck, ka, tuck. And I'm going to play the second rhythm that we learned, which is Doom ka tak 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 ka tak tak So Tommy's going to start and then I'll join him We're going to um, interlock the two brushing patterns now. Tommy will be um, playing pattern five, and I'll be playing pattern four. And here's pattern four. Tommy's going to 
start and then I'll join him. What I'm going to show you now is how to do those fast caws. Um, it's drawn from a South Indian technique played on a small frame drum called a kanjira that we'll show you a little bit later in the video. Um, I want you to think about your hand split completely in two. You've got the top and the bottom part of the hand. Let's hold it out like this. Let's go top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. And the syllables for this are ki ti ta ga, ki ti ta ga, ki ti ta ga, ki ti ta ga. Now, putting the hand on the drum, I want you to think about the way a magnet sticks to the refrigerator. That's what you really um, have to get the quality of sticking to the drum head for this technique. So let's, let's lift the top part of the hand up. Top, bottom, top, Bottom, ki di ta ga, ki di ta ga. Another way to work on strengthening your hand here is to go top, top, bottom, bottom, top, top, bottom, bottom, top, top, bottom, bottom. Um, one mistake that people often make at the beginning is to stiffen their hands up because. Uh, it actually does take a lot of force to get the right sounds here, but you still have to keep the hand relaxed. So uh, don't make this mistake. Keep the hand soft and sticking to the drum head. Top, bottom, top, bottom. Now the way that we incorporate this technique into a rhythm is um, by going kitty do, kitty do, kitty do, talk. To use that with a talk, you start from the bottom of the hand. Kitty talk, kitty talk, kitty talk, talk, kitty talk, talk, kitty talk, talk, kitty talk, talk. And a good way to practice that is by doing kitty do, kitty talk.
What I just showed you was how to replace one stroke before a doom or talk. Now I'll show you how to replace two strokes before a doom or talk. Now I'm going to show you how to replace two strokes right before a talk, and that starts with the bottom of the hand. Now I'm going to show you how to put the kit the doom into one of the combinations that we were um, learning early in the video. And that combination is doom ta ka doom ta ka doom ta kit the 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 We can also um, do the um, kit the tak. So that uh, combination would be tak tak ka tak tak ka tak tak ka tak tak kit the 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 tak tak ta tak tak kit the tak tak ta tak tak kit the tak. Now I'm going to show you how to replace two ka's with a kita taka. So we'll use a simple pattern. Doom ta ka ka. Doom ta ka ka. Doom ta kita taka. Doom ta kita taka. Doom ta kita taka. Doom ta ka ka. Doom ta kita taka. Doom ta ka ka. Doom ta kita taka. Doom ta kita taka. Doom. Now I'm going to show you how to replace two ka's with a kititaka going to a talk. Remember we start with the bottom of the hand in that case. Kititaka talk. So the pattern will be talk talk ka ka talk talk ka ka talk talk kititaka talk talk kititaka talk talk kititaka talk talk kititaka talk talk ka ka talk. Now, these exercises take a lot of practice. Um, just to let you know, it usually takes about two years to get really fluid on this technique, but some people get it much faster. Also helps if you're on unemployment. Um, the uh, big thing to keep in mind is that drumming is the most healthy, healing way that I've found to channel repetitive, obsessive behavior. So practice. Now I'm going to show you some talk exercises. We're going to be using the fourth, third, second finger on the playing hand and the fourth finger on the left hand. So four, three, two, four, four, three, Let's do two slow and then four 
at double that time. Tuck, tuck. After you practice that for a while, that's going to give you a nice roll. And you can use that roll to replace two tocks. So let's do a simple pattern. Doom, tock, tock, doom, tock, tock, doom, tock, tock. show you another exercise with the tocks and it'll start with the um, left hand, the fourth finger up here, tock, and then the third and then the second on the right hand and then back to the fourth finger on the left hand. So it goes. And you can replace two tocks with that. The roll actually replaces two tocks, but it begins with one tock and it ends at the other tock. Now this is taking um, two tocks and replacing them with four. So doom, tock, tock, doom. alternate um, the two different uh, exercises I just gave you. One where we're using the four, three, two, four, and one where we're using left, right, right, left. way to do talks and it's by snapping the fingers just as if you were going to snap your fingers but you're going to end up on the edge of the drum. Um, you can do all four fingers on both hands or you can concentrate on the two middle fingers which are the um, ones that are usually the strongest. And these exercises I'm going to show you are just going to use these two middle fingers. So we're going to do um, exercise two, the second rhythm that I showed you. And we're going to be using just the fourth finger snap up here. And the pattern is doom, ka, snap, tock, snap, ka, snap. to um, use two of the snaps up here, the fourth and the third, and we're going to take um, one of the other rhythms that we learned, which was doom, tock, doom, tock, tock, doom, tock, ka, and put the snaps in there. So we're going to go doom, snap, doom, snap, snap.
take the same rhythm and put double time snaps in that. We're going to use the two middle fingers on the left hand and the two middle fingers on the right hand. It'll start with the fourth finger on the left hand. And then it'll go to the fourth and then the third on the right and then the third on the left. So left, right, right, left. Left, right, right, left. And it'll go in the same pattern. It'll go do, tuck, do. rhythm and play just like we just did and replace the last two strokes with a kitataka. This is the frame drum I was playing at the beginning of the video. It's a uh, tambourine. It's a combination of the two oldest known percussion instruments, a frame drum and a metal rattle called a sistrum. And I can demonstrate some of the technique that we learned on the knee position on this drum. This is a tambourine that's based on a Brazilian drum called a pandeiro and uh, some of the techniques that are similar to what we learned on the sitting position is the doom is played with the thumb and that's the bass tone and the ka played with the fingertips stopping the vibration on the head. There's no tak but the edge of the drum is played on to get the sound of the jingles with the heel and fingertips of the hand. So it sounds something like this. This is another very old frame drum. It's called a bandeer. It has a snare on the inside that causes it to buzz. And I believe it's a remnant of the ancient bee priestess's drum. And I'm going to do some of the snapping technique that I showed you. This is the Kanjira. It's from South India, and this is the drum that the Kiritaka split hand technique comes from. It's a uh, tambourine with one set of jingles and a very loose head that the pitch is changed by the holding hand by squeezing it, and it's played with the dominant hand. Well, we've come to the end of the video. And the last thing that I want to talk to you about is practicing. People ask me how much they should practice, and I tell them at least an hour a day. And usually the response is, oh, I'll never have another hour in my day to practice. But I remind them that this is something that they really want to do, and you can always find 
an hour to do something you really want to do every day. And remember that practice plus patience equals power. The sound of the mother's blood and the sound of the drum are one. Drumming is a means of aligning ourselves with our deepest inner pulse and also aligning ourselves with the deepest pulse behind all of reality. We're going to finish by playing some rhythms from a wonderful trance-inducing frame drum festival in Brazil called Bumba Me Boy. <laughs> <laughs>